Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I will show you how you can install the Ripple D server. So basically how you can run your own validator or also how you can run basically maybe a full node or whatever. So there are multiple modes so you can run it. But I just wanted to show you here how you can install basically. So uh, regarding that you can see here this own page xpl.org slash install rippled. Um, right, so we can see here, so we'll quickly open system requirements here. So you can see here the specifications, what you would need uh, hardware-wise. Uh, so uh, you can see here that it's recommended having sent, so a Linux distribution, so Linux, uh, uh, send US, Red Hat, um, Ubuntu, whatever, uh, right, for development, Mac OS or Windows or most Linux distributions. Uh, but for running it, basically it's recommended using it, uh, uh, running it on a Linux, uh, so on a Linux distribution. Right, so I will be using the, win uh, the Ubuntu subsystem of Windows, so you can enable that. If you go to features, so if you would like to try it out, you can go to turn Windows features, o uh, features on or off and there's a subsection where you can select Windows subsystem for Linux and you can activate that then you can also get Ubuntu here to run locally. Alright, so let's get started. So here you can see just hard specs, you need at least 8 gigs, uh, gigabytes of RAM, you need uh, a 36 bit x86 uh, processor with at least two cores, and yeah, that's basically it. And at least 50 gigabytes of uh, storage. Uh, and SSDs are always to recommended with having a high, uh, high count of IOPS. So right, let's. Uh, so I, I, I O IOPS is I guess input outputs per second, but it's just an assumption here, so I could quickly Google that. But it would just make sense when it's about storage. So yeah, it's input output operations per second. So you can see that here. Right, IOPS, yeah, okay, I even pronounce it correctly. Well, fine for me. Okay, so let's get started. So I will be installing on Ubuntu or Debian Linux. So it's very simple, so you don't even need much knowledge here because just copy and pasting is basically enough how you can get started. So you can see here, we've got the first command, sudo apt-y uh, uh, update. So it's the first command, you just copy and paste there. Or you can over apt. Y update, so just enter there, then you will enter the password for your main user. Alright, so it's it's very simple as you can see here. Then again it will download and install. In the meantime, we'll copy the next command, so with command and contr uh, command control. So don't have to do that here. Alright, so then right click to paste it and say uh, enter again. So as we can see here, we will just install utility classes. So there are just additional things, as we can see here, that we'll also need in order to get the Ripple D server running. Then add Ripple package signing GPG key. So we need the signing key here. Again, copy and paste basically. Then again, okay, great. <laughs> then we'll check the fingerprint here. So this is something you have to do manually. So we will add it here. And then you basically compare if the fing fingerprint for Ripple is correct here, so that you're uh, downloading it from the right place. So we can see here uh, if it's basically, if it's correct here. So we'd also have to look at that, right? I think it's here. Yeah, exactly. So you can, you have to compare that one here. So as you can see here, the output should include um, an entry for Ripple, such as the following. As you can see, it should be similar to that one here. And it is similar to that one here, or basically exactly that one here. All right, so then we can go on. Now we'll add a repository when we uh, so the fr from Ripple that we download basically when we use apt-get that we get it from them basically. So uh, right, so you can also oh my bad, you can also uh, build it yourself, but it's more more difficult. So they also offer you a simple way to download and install the Ripple D server. So as you can see here, it's not hard. So done. We'll continue here. So here is also here it is also impo important that I select the focal. Did I bionic? Did I select bionic? I hope so. Yeah, let's hope so. Y yes. Okay, right. Then let's continue. Just continue here. Um, right. What else is there? Ah, okay, okay, my bad. Yeah, I would have had to select Bionic actually because you can see here it's so this would be the case for Ubuntu 20.4, but I have a Ubuntu 18.04, I think. So I would so I hope I'm 
Yeah, you name. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm not too sure what the command is, but I guess I have a Ubuntu 18.4. Would have to look it up though. So I'm not certain right now. Um, well, let's see how I can quickly check that. So I forgot the command, so it's been a while since I've been using it actively. LSB underscore release dash a so okay, yeah it's 18.4 so yeah exactly so we'll have to do that again but in this case i will have to select here bionic instead of focal so i will paste it again so copy and paste that but i will have to instead of um there it says focal oh no okay that's annoying okay well i will first copy and paste the command so one more time i will copy that and put it into notepad and then edit it so we can see here that it's focal, but we want here bionic. Now we'll copy and paste it again, and then we should be good to go. Yes. All right, so let's continue. So then this next one, so we have to update the repositories. All right, so again, copy and paste here. Not very hard, as you can see. In the me uh, right, then the next one, then we'll install R Ripple D, so Ripple D server, just copying all of that again, copy and paste, done. All right. In the meantime, we'll also highlight anybody can run a validator because many people think like it's impossible and so hard, but no, there is no software more or less so we can do that. But with basic knowledge of some Linux commands, as you can see here, it's not that hard. So it's not like a closed of society. So you can run a validator. All uh, right, so system has, okay, right, I don't have a system to tell here. Since it's a sus subsystem, I would have to call it differently. But okay, let's see, uh, probably can do that as well. I would need a, a true Linux to do that though. Uh, right, so in the meantime, right, so I will skip those two steps here because I would need a full Linux to use system CTL. So as you know, it's only a subsystem here on my computer. But they will start the Ripple D server locally, so we quickly have to find out where it basically is to start it manually. So we'll quickly go to etc. So we can also quickly look at opt ripple ripple. Yeah, exactly. There, there we can also see the the config of our validator basically for node. So we can go down, so you can see here what is being used. The value is the txt is the file. And this is why right now Vim I'm using here. So ls, so we can see here the validators which we are using here. So there are examples of all of that, for example, as you can see here. And then there we could configure our own UNL, so which validators we want to trust. So that's this famous part. So every, every person who's uh, running a validator can decide themselves if uh, which uh, which um, right wh which uh, validator want to run, for example, could ex uh, enable that one here, then would be basically using the validator list of coil. So that's up to the person who runs the validator. So the burden is up on the validator and the person who runs the validator. All right, but I will now quit and ignore. All right, so we'll now try to start the uh, service. Oh, I will just I will quickly pause it because I don't know. Ah, services status all. Okay, yeah, I will quickly pause the video. All right, so we will have to change the directory opt slash ripple slash bin. So you say, go just enter the command. Um, see, oh, so we will go now to my my own directory. So we in my own directory cd for change change directory opt slash ripple slash bin. And then we're in that directory, and then we will call the kind of sudo that, uh, dot slash to execute something rippled. And now we start the Ripple D server or the daemon. And uh, now we can basically see what it is doing here. So now it's basically just getting started here. And it would need some more configuration. I just want to show you basically how you can set it up so we can see here what else is it doing here. So we can here now follow just everything that happens. And uh, it usually also takes some time until it's there. So until it's basically all set up. So it might take some time because it's all synced. So you can see here processing the ledger data. So you can see the weights. What else is it doing? Ledger consensus warning. So right now it's not uh, in consensus here. Right, so they're missing ledgers, which is trying to get and so on. But that's basically what a validator looks like. 
So I would need some more configuration uh, to also, so I would to check if I set up everything correctly here. So right now it's obviously, uh, it's also acting faulty and all of that. And obviously I'm not, so this value I just started here and running. Obviously so not, n none of the other people's UNL. So therefore I am more or less ignored in the entire process. Um, but if you, for example, run a validator if you're if you're doing a, a good job there and if you like i said if you're not acting maliciously or anything then you will be also added to the units of other people so that's basically how that works because you want that the network works and so, uh, like i said so already coil uh, and sorry my bad xopl xoplf so the xop ledger foundation uh, also already removed a ripple validator from from their unit list at least and also added one new validator or at least or even three i think yeah they added three more they did three validators and removed two yeah so one member was said was announcing that they will stop running the validator so that one get removed and yeah so that's basically a validator which which, which showed you how you can install it it's not very hard and then obviously there's a little bit more to it so also configuring all of that uh, se selecting their own, your own validator list, so the the nodes you, wh who you want to trust, so it's also up to you, and so on. So there are multiple report modes, so we'll make follow-up videos, where we'll be going into more detail how all of that works, because I also am not, uh, that, I'm not that familiar with all of the features here. I just want to basically show you how to install it and how you can run it, more or less. Um, but it will be showing you how we can even further configure all of that. But also I am just currently at the learning point, but I just want to show you that it's not that exclusive and not that hard to do basically. Because like, like I said, so many people think, no, it's impossible. Only people, uh, whatever people ripple the points can run a validator, but it's not true. Anybody can run a validator and it's completely open. So right now this one is also, like I said, so this one is the easy setup guide. You can also download the source code yourself, compile yourself and then run it. So you, you're not, you're not depending on it, but they also offer you a simple way to install it. So as you could see, it was not very hard for even a quote unquote noob to yeah, do that. All right, so thanks for watching. I will be doing follow-up videos if you like these videos and see you in the next one.